Um, on UN Security Council Resolution 1929 that Iran definitely just violated, I don't think there's any question about that. We know that Russia is going to block any action being taken. I know you're going through the steps that are necessary, but we know they're going to block. And I think what the vast majority of people on the committee want to know is knowing that we know the outcome before it starts, that there won't be sanctions there won't be penalties put against Iran because Iran, Russia will uh, block them. We want to know unilaterally what the United States is going to do because we know functionally nothing is going to happen at the UN. I think that's the question we yeah. all have. And, and I think you'll have another letter coming from the vast majority of us soon wanting you to spell that out. So well, I think there was a little bit of a confusion there. Uh, that's right. Okay, sir. Yeah, right. absolutely. I mean, we know that Russia is going to block this. So the real question is, center is unilateral sanctions. That's right. And what we'll do. And, and there isn't a snap back around this particular issue. No, no, but issue. we'll go that through was... the process at the UN Security Council and the panel of experts uh, and then decide what we're going to do all of which we know will lead to a dead end, and therefore we're going to have to take unilateral action, or we're going to begin the process by letting Iran violate on the front end the very agreement that we was just negotiated. I mean, that's kind of where we are. We know that, and so we'd like something a little more clear coming from the administration. Se uh, Senator Menendez. Just, do you get the sense, I mean, we've seen, you've seen, others have talked about, you know, what, uh, what Russia has done on the ground relative to quote, our friends. Um, do you see a situation developing where, where Russia would concentrate its efforts solely on ISIS and not on the more moderate groups that, uh, quote, are our friends? No, I don't see that at all, uh, Chairman. I think the, the Russians aren't there to deal with ISIS. I mean, so, no, no. So, so if you will, that, you know, 180 degrees contradicts what Secretary Kerry said yesterday, 180 degrees in that he does see us uh, having the, the focus together on ISIS. Uh, again, that's why I asked him my opening comments or made the, made the comments about the facts on the ground. The facts on the ground are that Russia is killing our friends. And so, and you don't see them moving away from killing our friends to focusing like we are on ISIS. You don't see that happening. I want to be very clear that the way you phrased the question, which was that Russia would ex focus exclusively on ISIL, I don't see that they're going to do that. Because Russia, in the end, is there to stabilize Assad. And the, if you will, the, the wolf closest to the door for Assad is Jabhat al-Nusra and other elements, Jaysh al-Fatah and some of the Syrian opposition elements that, that we have a relationship with. Those are the ones that are the greatest threat. And those are the ones where the Russians are, in fact, providing uh, support to both the regime's ground forces and Hezbollah and Iranian supported elements. They're providing that capability to first stabilize the situation and probably ultimately to uh, recover the Alawi heartland. Uh, and at this juncture, uh, we, we, we haven't seen and we, we won't, I think, see a large scale Russian investment in going after ISIL because it has to do what it came there to do which is to pre prevent the collapse of the Assad regime. That doesn't mean eventually that they won't join us in a, in a larger investment of their resources in dealing with Daesh. But for now, it, I think very clearly, while we had an expectation that we would partner to deal with Daesh, that the Russians would play a role in the reduction of violence uh, and the reduction of the conflict, and then play a role constructively with us in creating a political transition, we haven't seen any of that. 